Now, I'm not saying that this is a forewarning of any kind, but let's just say when the Pentagon presents the report on UFOs to Congress, well, take what you hear with a grain of salt. As is the case with anything once confidential or classified, when this information becomes declassified and is open to the general public, all I'm saying is don't be surprised if down the line, things change. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just leave it at this. Whatever the report says when it's released may be true, but it also may not be the whole truth. Five or 10 years from now, we may discover there was much more to that report than initially revealed. It's happened before, so who's to say it won't happen again? Today in LBQ, we're counting down the top 10 times the Pentagon has lied. Buckle up, because we're exposing the government for the frauds they are. I'm definitely gonna be on a watch list after this one. <laughs> Smash that like button and let's get into it. Starting us off at number 10, the Afghan war. The Washington Post exposed numerous documents regarding what actually went down over the course of a nearly two decade war. Aside from the documents, it was reported they conducted over 400 interviews with senior military and government officials who spoke on what went wrong during the Afghanistan war with the majority under the assumption they'd remain anonymous. It seems at first most Americans were behind the idea of taking down the Taliban and preventing another attack on American soil. However, as the war continued on, it appears things became stagnant without anyone ever making this public knowledge. Although the Bush, Obama, and Trump administration all swore they wouldn't get caught up trying to legitimately rebuild the country, it seems that's exactly what they were doing. As per the Washington Post, the interviews conducted, I quote, contradict a long course of public statements that assured the US was making progress in Afghanistan. All in all, it seems this was an unwinnable war and rather than admit that, they just kept pushing this idea that we were winning the war, even though early on, it seems senior officials weren't even certain of what the task was. At number nine, UFOs. No real surprise here, for the longest time the US government has made it appear as though anyone who has ever seen a UFO is talking crazy. All the sightings were always shut down and any mention of aliens or UFOs were laughed at. Anyone who had an interest in trying to uncover the truth was known as a crazy theorist. But it seems now the US government is flipping the script. Even dating back to 1997, a New York Times article headlined, I quote, government lied to public about UFO sightings, CIA admits, apparently didn't make as much noise as it should have. The article goes into detail mentioning how during the Cold War days, the US government didn't want the citizens to panic. And it seems back in the 50s and 60s when the American military, specifically the Air Force, were using jets to spy on potential threats and adversaries, they would get plenty of reports of what many thought were UFOs. Rather than admit to the truth, which was that the US military had capabilities beyond what the general public and likely other countries were aware of, they denied the idea of UFOs and these sightings, attributing the sightings to weather phenomena and other rare natural occurrences. That's pretty f***, isn't it? it? Like, a lot of this on this list is kind of f***ed. Number eight, the Syrian war. To no surprise, this list is going to consist of a lot of lies about previous wars. This lie was exposed by a former top military aide who claimed to have persuaded President Trump to keep members of the US military in Syria, despite his claim that he'd pull all the troops out. A former US diplomat, Jim Jeffrey, who was Trump's special envoy for Syria, before being promoted to an even higher ranking, explained how whenever Trump suggested pulling the troops out, the department came up with even more reasons to keep them there. In both 2018 and 2019, Trump spoke on the defeat of ISIS and the withdrawal of American troops. Speaking on this, Jeffrey said, I quote, What Syria withdrawal? There was never a Syria withdrawal. When the situation in Northeast Syria had been fairly stable after we defeated ISIS, Trump was inclined to pull out. In each case, we then decided to come up with five better arguments for why we needed to stay. And we succeeded both times. That's the story. Although many were led to believe the troops were coming home, it seems as long as the number was kept to under a thousand total, everyone was willing to go along with the idea that the troops were pulled out of Syria. On to number seven, two murders and a lie. This detailed report accused the US government and the Bush administration of lying in regards to their reasoning for opening fire on a hotel which was housing international journalists. More specifically, when the US were in Baghdad, a tank fired directly at a hotel on April 8, 2003, killing two members of the media and injuring three others. At the time, it seemed the US was closing in on the capital and wanted to put an end to the war once and for all. Despite warnings to leave the capital altogether, the journalists remained in the hotel and unfortunately were caught up in the crossfire. However, it seems initially the Pentagon reported that they opened fire in response to enemy fire coming from in or around the hotel. This claim was disputed by surviving journalists who denied any shots coming from the hotel. The next day, the Pentagon claimed Iraqi snipers were located at the hotel and the general who was in charge of making the call for the tank that fired the explosive also claimed the tank was under attack. However, the soldier who was sitting in the actual tank and fired the shot, as well as his immediate supervisor, told journalists a different story. One that didn't include snipers or attacks, but just a report of an alleged Iraqi spotter who was monitoring and reporting on US activity. Interesting. 
bringing us to six COVID. Now this one is a bit iffy, I'll be honest, as we don't know to the full extent how much the Pentagon or US government in general knew about the virus before it would do the damage it has done. Previously, former President Trump has admitted to knowing the severity, but still downplaying the virus to prevent mass hysteria. Still with that being said, it would have been good for the general public to be informed. Although Trump was quoted sticking to his decision explained on March 19th, 2020, I quote, I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down because I don't want to create a panic. That being said, the White House press secretary at the time, Kaylee McEnany, which is a fantastic name to say, claimed that Trump nor the government ever lied or downplayed the severity of COVID. But I'm sure in about like 25 years or so they'll admit to lying about something in regards to the virus. We gotta just wait as those did who lived through half the lies on this list had to. So see you guys in a, you know, a couple decades. <laughs> Number five, private UFO footage. Just to no surprise, given that the Pentagon lied about UFOs existing in the first place, they weren't very on board with the idea of videos of UFOs being released to the public. And it turns out they were never supposed to be made public, so now the Pentagon may be doing some damage control. In December 2018 and March 2018, the New York Times released three allegedly declassified videos from the US Navy capturing what appeared to be UFOs. The videos from 2004 and 2015 were actually never meant to go public. As per Joseph Gratisher, a spokesperson for the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations of Information Warfare. What a fantastic title to have as, as a job, by the way. Good job, Joseph. Speaking with the Black Vault, a news intelligence agency, Gratisher explained that the crafts in the videos were, I quote, unidentified aerial phenomena, but also mentioned how the videos, which were shared by a former Pentagon employee, should have never become public info. Instead, it seems there was a misunderstanding and it was only to be released for other US government agencies. But once it became public knowledge, it seemed there was no going back. At number four, Pentagon Secret Army. There have been claims, although nothing has ever been official, that the Pentagon has secret agents located all over the world, somewhere in the ballpark of 60,000 deep. Yeah, there's potentially 60,000 undercover agents working for the Pentagon somewhere in the world. Reports claim they are international, spanning from Pakistan to West Africa, Russia, China, and who knows where else. Although Congress has never officially recognized the secret army, former and current intelligent officers who have remained anonymous for obvious reasons have spoken on these claims in the past. Number three, Charles Flynn's phone call. Following the Capitol Hill riots, there was a lot of controversy over who was responsible for what. The city and local law enforcement claimed that the Pentagon was slow to deploy more troops, in an effort to help slow the unruly crowd who would eventually make their way into the Capitol building. On the flip side, the Pentagon and Army claimed they never denied nor delayed any requests to deploy more troops. As you can imagine, it was a big old game of he said, she said. In official documents released by the Department of Defense, they initially claimed that Charles Flynn, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Army, was not a part of the call. For context's sake, Charles Flynn is the brother of Michael Flynn, who was the former White House National Security Advisor under the Trump administration. Going back to Charles, well it turns out although initially he wasn't listed as being a part of the call, he actually was. In a statement to CNN, Flynn explained, I quote, I entered the room after the call began and departed prior to the call ending as I believe the decision was imminent from then Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy and I needed to be in my office to assist in executing the decision. Now that's fine, but why did the Pentagon initially lie and say he wasn't on the call at all when he was? Number two, the UFO task force. When reports initially arose claiming that the US government had actually formed a separate division or task force specifically looking out for UFOs, to no surprise, they denied the claim. Given that for decades they denied that UFOs even existed in the first place, this shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone. And former Pentagon official Louis Elizondo has since come out claiming that the US government and Pentagon have launched a smear campaign against him in an effort, I guess, to downplay his previous claims of UFOs being real. He's now trying to take them to court, filing a 64 page complaint back on May 3rd, but it's unclear where things will go from here. As you can imagine, the Pentagon is denying all the claims. At number one, the Pentagon Papers. Probably one of the biggest, most notorious lies on our list, the Pentagon Papers, officially titled Report of the Office of the Secretary of Defense Vietnam Task Force. A detailed report involving all the military and political activity the United States government had in Vietnam from 1945 to 1967, which was released by Daniel Eisenberg and made public by the New York Times in 1971. An article from the New York Times in 1996 mentioned that aside from the Pentagon Papers, the Johnson administration, who took office following the untimely passing of John F. Kennedy, had, I quote, systemically lied not only to the public but also to Congress. The papers revealed that the US military had secretly attacked areas which were not included in the public report and had actually withheld substantial information regarding their tactics and the situation itself. Wow, what a wild one that one was. 10 Pentagon lies and let me say right now if I disappear after this list, well you'll have to wait a good 40 or 50 years to find out what happened to me. Biggest cliffhanger of all time. Let me know your thoughts down below which number stood out to you guys the most. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video. Top 10 secrets the Pentagon is hiding. John Stiles said the Pentagon reminds me of the stadium in Call of Duty Warzone. That's nice. 
Is there a big helicopter in the middle too? Is the roof missing? I don't know why I'm being, you know, I'm not being nice right now. Play me in Warzone. I'll probably beat you though. Toxic Gaming Bro said, people are saying that the Pentagon will release info about UFOs, but how can we trust them if they already lied to us in the past? Bro, that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. They lie about everything. Everything that they're gonna tell us, there's gonna be like a little more truth that they don't include. And I'm not even saying they lie for the wrong reasons. Sometimes, you know, Denzel said it perfectly. He said, if you don't read the news, you're not informed. And if you do read the news, you're too informed. There's no right amount, because you know too much or you know too little. There's no perfect amount. And that, my friends, is unfortunately the world of media. Ken Thomas said, what if we were just a speck of dust on somebody else's planet or universe? So that's how I think aliens see us. The way that we see like ants, and like squirrels or other animals in our day to day lives that we don't care about. I think aliens see us as just like an irrelevant species that don't do anything for anyone, so who cares? Anyways guys, on that note, have yourselves a great day. I've been your host Pepper, love you lots and we'll see you soon. Aliens, let's go!